Drinks with the leaders on everyone. Drinks with the leaders. It's time to have fun. Business people, lots of ideas. If you need some advice, come right here. With leader is he. What happened to the plant? I want the plant in front of your face, Scott. I got it, but I don't, you know, I don't, I want to keep mixing it up. I had a pumpkin the other week and I thought that was cool because you were shocked by it. You know, I can see it before we go live, right? I can see you. So it's I, don't, <laughs> I don't believe you. I just, I, you can't see me. You don't run this show. <laughs> just a little bit. But I do like when you keep it seasonal. I, I love that extra touch that you that's, do. That's, that's my wife. And uh, speaking of seasonal, these graphics that you've put together for Bank of Blue Valley are not seasonal. These are their beautiful logo and colors. So how, how did you come up with putting all of that together? It's, they're beautiful. Yeah. So I put it in the workload for my amazing designer. There you go. <laughs> I, you know, it's really unfair because I get a lot of the credit a lot of times, but I have an awesome team that does it. So I have a fun fact over at my company. We have the same designer that actually uh, worked on designing the Chick-fil-A main website. So we got some crazy talent. So she put these through. So, but how exciting is it that Bank of Blue Valley is sponsoring us now? Uh, yeah, total accident of COVID and, and getting friends together like we're doing today that we'll announce here shortly. Um, you know, just having conversations within the community. And I can't think of a better partner than Bank of Blue Valley because they are one of the best kept secrets in Kansas City, one of the top five largest banks. And the work that they do in the community really touches the entire metropolitan area. So it's pretty exciting and they're pretty darn big. They're a big regional player that's connected to a lot of bigger organizations throughout the country. So we'll we'll give more of that information later. And then obviously uh, they have a lot of great positions. So a lot of people have been affected by the pandemic and hopefully you know we can guide them to go to Bank of Blue Valley's website to look at careers they're hiring not only in Kansas City, but throughout the country. Look at you, you're, you're set. Why, why are you in insurance? You could have been an influencer I, back in the day. I don't know about that. I, I, uh, I don't know anything about insurance, and that's why none of my clients ever ask me questions. They <laughs> ask my partners, which is beautiful. Right. Um, I, wanted to, I wanted to drop this, too, because we haven't noticed this. You and I, I was just giving everybody on this a hard time because we've got another all-boy show. But that's because we purposely scheduled an all-women show coming up. And actually, we're going to give you the boot in two weeks. And uh, the CEO of Bank of Blue Valley, Wendy Reynolds, is going to come on and co-host with me. I'm going to be commenting like crazy, though. So, Good. Yeah, you better be. And speaking of commenting, we need to know who's watching us today. So put in the comments over here. And also, if you are watching us from Kansas City or remember last time we had people from all over the United States watching us, let us know your, where you're watching from. And are you liking that over here on Facebook? Or do you like it on LinkedIn? Which platform do you like? Because now we go live to both LinkedIn and Facebook. So, all right. Nobody came to hear us talk, unfortunately. I wish they did. Yeah, that was that was a long banter, but we got to get to our guest. Uh, yeah, and we're calling it banter now because I've been watching a lot of Love Island UK. So, all right. So, you're going to do the introductions because some of these guys have hard names. And since we're going all boys, we decided to go boys band with our music. So, I'm going to play the music. Oh. So, I've got a good one. Oh, well, you know who my fire is. Low Ray Easterwood starting off. Do his tagline. Well, huh? the tagline is father, realtor, entrepreneur. Got a tagline. Yeah. That. Number Appreciate two, Austin Moss. <laughs> Good work, Austin. Number three, coming up, Francis Nightfall. Did he get it? Did he get your last name right? <laughs> it was <What>? close enough. <laughs> Actually, but yeah, I practiced. Well, finally, last but not least, uh, making big announcements we haven't even heard them about, talk about yet. We will soon, Mitch Case. 
<laughs> all right, all right. Thank you very much. Just kidding. I feel that boy band action. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Welcome. We are so excited you are all here. Thank you for say, spending your afternoon with us. Did you guys bring drinks with you? Mm. Remember when we all used to drink the whole pandemic? Now I remember. Remember. Literally for the last couple of months, everyone just drinks water, but we pretend we're drinking. Right. Yep. But at the beginning of this, we were kind of tipsy every show. <laughs> we have a sponsor now. We grew up. Okay. So speaking of, uh, I want to say hello to a couple of people and make sure, you know, Scott and I always talk about networking and one of the great places to network is digitally. We were kind of talking about this. Earlier. Jump over here and we will make sure that we share your comments. We've, we've actually had people reach out to us and tell us they've met people over here in the comments. So former guest, Miss Jennifer Dehan, love that boy, boy band bliss. Say that four times fast. And Andrew Crawford says he appreciates what you guys are. He says too. Well, I guess sorry, guys. He's not talking to you guys. What we're doing for KC, but really, we're just lucky that we get so many awesome people to join us. So let us know you're here. Let us know you're watching. So, Lo Ray, we started with your uh, your. I think our first guest to have your own tagline: Father, um, Realtor, Entrepreneur. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah, well, the tagline says it all, right? I mean, you know, being a father, my, my daughter came into my life six years ago and just completely changed my life. I mean, speaking of boy bands, I mean, I was that the bachelor life. You know, I was all about that, right? You know what I mean? I didn't want kids, didn't want to settle down, everything like that. Then my daughter came into my life and just turned my whole, whole world upside down. Um, so, yeah, so she, she, number one, being a father is the most rewarding experience of my whole life. Uh, then being a realtor, you know, real estate is my profession. That's my expertise. Uh, that's what I do day in, day out. Uh, and then, you know, entrepreneur, I'm always trying to get involved in different um, different endeavors. So, uh, like, I just, um, I know you probably have a session later on about what we're getting into next, but I just signed on to be a fitness ambassador for a uh, fitness line that's launching here in Kansas City. So, uh, definitely excited about that. But I'm like looking for that kind of stuff to get into. So, that, that's me in a nutshell. I actually challenged him to a lifting contest when I saw that yesterday. <laughs> she did. She did. <laughs> we don't work out a lot. We're going to do, do that a lot. <laughs> well, we do a lot here for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, right about here. You guys? <laughs> what about you, Austin? What about my tagline? I didn't get a tagline. And Scott, Scott could probably make one up there. I would uh, say uh, three putts, yeah. great mustache. Three and financial genius. Yes, yes. Always 96, right? Good thing Scott. Uh, no, yeah, we, uh, so finance, um, some real estate investing, some fund management, uh, a lot, anything, anything related around capital and businesses is pretty much our go-to, so. And uh, awesome. not, a, not, awesome. a human, not a human dog, but or not a human father, but a human uh, or a dog father, two dogs, husky's wife. You made that so confusing. You have uh, dogs. <laughs> yeah, edit, edit that out, by the way. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> live, so we, we can't do it. But Austin, kind of give everyone a little background on how you started your company and where you grew it today, just to kind of give everyone a little bit of size and skill, because you're helping um, finance a lot of growing uh, companies that oftentimes struggle to find financing in the open market. So can you kind of give everyone a little bit of an idea of the business background and where you've grown the company to where it is today? Yeah. So uh, I'm CEO of Strategic Capital. We um, started the company back in 2014. We, there's, you know, I've had other businesses and there's always been a hard navigation for businesses, especially small, medium sized businesses to get capital if you're not buying a piece of property or some equipment, right? Outside of that, it's very difficult uh, or paying on a high interest credit card for not what you need. And so we, we took that concept and we went, went around, we have, you know, we built a platform that has all the underwriting criteria so someone can apply. It bumps it against our database. We have a consultative approach to it. And so we'll work with that client on behalf of them and go find the best loan, the best type of product, the timeline, whether you need it in a couple of days or you have time to get a better rate. And we'll leverage all those different offers from banks, non-banks, family offices, whatever it may be uh, to get that that client the best rate, the most amount of money in the longest term. So that's in a nutshell what we, what we do. 
Absolutely. All right, Francis, I'm not going to attempt your last name. But tell us <laughs> who you are and what you do. Um, I'm a father first. Um, married now for 10 plus years. Got an 80-year-old daughter. Uh, been with my wife for 17 years. I'm originally from Liberia, West Africa. I came here physically as a refugee, went to a civil war, five years off a 14 year civil war, bounced around for a little bit and ended up here in the States. Um, I'm currently in- He's out. There oh. we go. Small company. Currently in, Ken- currently in Kansas City. Currently in Kansas City. Controlled out of a small company here with 94 employees. And, uh, you know, just trying to get our foot in the door and everything that's positive as it relates to our industry here. So, yeah. Francis, when you originally came to the States, how did you end up in the Midwest? And then how did you end back up in the Midwest? So I was in D.C. when I came to the States. I was in the Silver Spring, D.C. area for a couple of years. Uh, had some, you know, friends and, and relatives there, but I basically came here by myself. I left my entire family home in Africa. Um, and a buddy of mine whom I knew in school, we're well, not in the same class, it was a class over me in school. Uh, we used to uh, work at a car dealership washing cars. And we decided one summer um, to move to Kansas because his aunt lived in Topeka at the time. And she thought it was gonna be a good place for us to try to get in school. And the summer of 97, we decided to get in his car and uh, we jet across country and, you know, I ended up here. I was in Emporia for a semester that summer. I uh, went up to Washburn. I was there for a little bit, um, undergrad. Uh, so I was working full time because obviously, like I mentioned, I had people in Africa to take care of. So I worked full time and went to school full time. Then I got done with that. Grad school, I went to uh, Baker and I was at State Street. 9-11 happened. Um, I didn't want to be in Kansas City anymore. My experience this year was not as found. Being, uh, you know, from Africa and African-American in Kansas, it wasn't fun for me at all. So I, took, uh, I left, went on the East Coast. I was there for six months, unemployed, and got a job um, to go to L.A. and work for a hedge fund. Um, and that was about 15, 16. Well, I've been here three years now. That's crazy. So that was about 18 years ago. And my wife just never liked L.A. Then the eight year old came up came along and it just made everything crazy. And she's like, dude, <laughs> I'm out. You know, uh, so we wanted to race the little one with her grand uh, you know, grandparents and cousins. And I will admit I came fighting and screaming, man, but you know, <laughs> I wasn't gonna win that battle. <laughs> you know, so I've been here and just just been grinding it out. Yeah. All right, Mitch, I think some of our our people have heard of you, but you've you've got a lot to tell us right now. I'm hoping I think a lot of these viewers air in because the big news is, is you just posted that you no longer are working at your previous employer. So tell us who you are and what you plan on doing. Breaking news. Yeah, yeah. So, man, it was uh, was a long time coming. But as you've kind of already heard, like uh, being a father figure to my boys is a huge part of why I chose to. Uh, take off from my previous employer. And COVID honestly is a little bit to blame of that because I started realizing moments that I was not aware of were happening. Um, And I got to kick the ball around with my boy while working from home. And it was just an experience that I wanted to be able to continue on. So the big news was that after working for a company for eight and a half years and being uh, what you would call financially successful on paper, I decided to take a leap of faith and pour into the avenues of a couple of different adventures that my wife and I are going to be going on over the next however many months and years it'll allow us. But uh, we started a company called More Than a Meal uh, a little over two, three years ago, and it's just started to pick up and take off. And, you know, everybody's kind of tossing out their tagline. So I'll tell you our tagline for our company right now is just to help you strengthen your most valued relationships. And the way that we're trying to do that is working with business owners and operators, sales teams and HR directors to find creative ways to connect and engage with their employees and clients right now, because COVID has made that really difficult uh, with everybody kind of being virtual. So what we do at our heart is we provide really simple slow cooker meal kits for people that have gone through some sort of life event, whether that's having a baby, whether that is recovering from surgery, COVID, cancer, there's a lot of different scenarios that people just need help in those moments. And we want to be able to provide a really simple way 
to be able to pour into that and then give back to the community as well. So we're excited to be partnering with a couple of nonprofit organizations here to give back with every purchase of every single meal. We're going to be donating back to a give back fund that will serve some of the other nonprofits here in Kansas City that don't serve their community through meals. They serve them through education and other sources. And we're now going to be able to partner with them and provide that for their community as well. So I am super excited about that and getting to pour into that every single day has been an amazing passion. And, you know, my son came down, I got my new office set up here in the basement over the weekend. My son came down on Monday and he just goes, wow, dad, your office is awesome. And that's like just that moment of being at home with this. And like, I'm sitting in the corner of a nasty Waldo basement. Um, and he's just excited for me to be here. So it was right then and there is worth it. And I'm just really excited to pursue a passion and a dream that has always been there and it's burning fire. And now I get to live it. And part of why you've been successful is because you've been really good at relationships. And I want to, people are just as excited for you, which I'm not sure I I have seen this with anybody else take that leap quite at this level. People are very, very excited for you to make this leap as well. So I think it'll be, it'll, it'll take you for years and years and years, even probably more than you think. <laughs> so very exciting. Okay. So low Ray, um, talk to us a little bit about like, obviously real estate. I think at the beginning of COVID, everybody was a little concerned what was going to happen with real estate. And you really, I mean, we're personal friends. So I've watched you thrive into you started a podcast around real estate. You already have another show you do. You're getting sponsorships. You really, you took your videos next level when it comes to real estate. So kind of talk about your wins through COVID and, and why you think that you didn't shut down when I saw so many realtors shut down without realizing what was going to happen in the market. Why you were able to just put your, uh, what is it, gas to the pedal or the pedal to the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I think, you know, one thing about being a realtor, of course, is, you know, yourself and you're an entrepreneur. Right. So, I mean, the, my last two taglines are kind of go hand in hand and being an entrepreneur, you see opportunities when everybody else see challenges. Right. And so what I saw with that opportunity was, yeah, I couldn't go anywhere, but I took that time to, to study. I took that time to educate myself. I took that time to I was on webinars. I was still networking with other people. Um, you know, and I was just writing down ideas, you know, and I just, um, one thing and, and Aaron, you know, this Les Brown, you know, I'm still jealous that you super cool with him, but, um, I mean, I listen to people like him all the time. Right. And I just, I just keep listening to positive stuff, positive stuff, positive stuff, positive messages. Um, you know, life is about how you look at things. Right. I mean, uh, like I'm saying, you know, I see opportunities where people see challenges, you know, so, um, I just, you know, people were panicking during the pandemic and i was just kept thinking about all right what what is this time sitting at home going to allow me to focus on that i otherwise wouldn't spend the time on doing right and it just and i just started thinking what what can i get myself into what can i get involved with you know and um so that, that that's that i just stayed positive you know and just and just took it and ran with it yeah or, or a question about so les brown plays a big role in in aaron's world but for the, the yeah. viewers of this show that may not know a lot about him can you kind of give everyone an idea of, of who les brown is and how he's helped you personally and how he helps people around the world yeah you know i mean he's i just know him as a motivational speaker right i remember there somebody sent me a video about two and a half years ago um I, I was going i was kind of like in this depressed mode um i just got into real estate really i mean if anybody knows anything about real estate it's hard to get going like i mean it literally takes a couple of years to, to get going um so you know i got fired from my job that's why i decided to do real estate um you know no money um I just had my daughter uh you know she was young so i was really looking for something to some sense of direction and somebody sent me a video and Les Brown, uh, he, he wasn't in that video, but the next video that popped up on YouTube, he was on that. And so uh, it just so happened that right before his video popped up, this other realtor um, that kind of mentored me, you know, he mentioned Les Brown to me. So I was like, let me let me see what this guy's about. And I don't know what it is about that guy, mm. but when you listen to him, he just catches you. And I mean, and it's every single video is the exact same energy, is the exact same, I mean, there's not a single video of his I haven't watched that I didn't take something from it. And so um, I just started listening to more and more of his videos. I think he has like a, a, a morning morning motivation video that I, I, I watch every once in a while. But I mean, I could just sit and listen to that guy all day long. 
And just listening to him, he just got me fired up. And um, he just got me where I am now. So, yeah, if, if you're ever looking for a motivational guy, like, I, I can't think of anybody better than Les. Like, seriously. He has a live show every day at 11 o'clock, CST, with an OK co-host. Yeah, 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 I know about that, right? Like I said, I'm jealous about that. Yeah, I'm a little busy now, so I don't have the time I did a few years ago to listen. But, uh, but no, seriously, like, I mean, that guy, like I said, I don't know. He's just, he's... He's one of those people that God just blessed with that, the the ability to motivate people. And I, I don't think, I can't think of anyone else that does it better than him. Mm. Um, Scott, I don't think I told you this, but last week when I was getting ready to do, jump on the show, he called and he goes, what are you doing? And I said, actually, I got to do my local show. I always call it my local show. And he goes, am I not good enough? I haven't gotten an invite on there yet. And I was like. <laughs> yeah, no one, no one with over half a million followers is allowed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just didn't want to feel like. Um, yeah, I've kind of been the same place with you, Lorraine, is I think all those years of listening to motivation, the minute that the pandemic started, you could tell who had spent years getting their mind ready for, right. for yeah. some of this stuff. How about you, Austin? I, I'm actually, I, you know, we've only met, we met during COVID and we haven't met in person yet. You could be seven feet tall. I have no idea. Oh, uh, he's, he's tall. He's tall. He kind of looks tall. Do I look tall? I um, slow to get me in the frame here, so... <laughs> so okay you can, yeah so we'll have to meet in person but kind of tell us you know pandemic you've got a whole bunch of employees and a whole bunch of people to manage you know all of a sudden going managing them home well what are some of the wins and some of the lessons you've learned during COVID? uh yeah i mean it's <clears throat> in the financing space it's been very interesting you know because we kind of see and cover you know all aspects of you know what banks are doing what head are doing what you know the market's doing what how the actual end business is getting impacted so you know we were uh we so we typically would fund you know two or three loans a day prior to covid um covid hit march 15th um everyone had to go work from home that week uh, we didn't fund a single loan that week and so and that had a lot to do with you know we have 260 lenders on the platform and it's just you know the scare of putting capital out right now not knowing what's going to happen which then you know you fast forward uh, PPP comes out, the banks are helping stimulus. Uh, we process about 300 or so PPP loans uh, just to help, you know, people in the portfolio that we've already lent money to, to help them get through this. Um, you know, and then also just, you know, there was, a, there was a big issue there where if you had a bank and the bank wasn't doing PPP, then you were kind of screwed really, right? Because other banks weren't going to help you unless you're a client. And you couldn't get set up as a client. They're already helping people. So we set up partnerships with a couple of non-bank lenders to help some of those smaller companies. So the average PPP with big banks was 250. Our average is 40, 40 some thousand on the, so a lot of the smaller companies, but um, yeah, so I think that was the win. I mean, being able to navigate so far through it, uh, the catch 22 to that is the stimulus. Uh, nobody really needed additional capital because that pushed them through, you know, to really about now, and we'll see what happens, whether, you know, more stimulus comes in. Um, but from the, you know, that was typically, you know, small business, uh, medium business now is kind of starting to get affected too, just because banks are lowering credit lines. We had a company had a $5 million line, only was using 2 million of it. And they knocked it down to a two and a half million dollar limit for no reason. I mean, the, the business was doing great actually, uh, but they're just trying to reduce exposure. So that, you know, that helps a lot for us just because we have a lot of non-bank lenders out there that can help and want to take up that market share. So it's been interesting for sure to, to navigate it. And uh, I think people are getting better. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, we'll see how we take it. I think people get through there and it will be better for it and a lot of a lot more uh, strategies in mind in case it happens again. So. Yeah, it was one of those things that we've never been through it, right? So you had to figure it out. Yeah. We're all ready next time. All of us are prepped next time for sure. Yeah. Francis, how about you? What are some of your wins during COVID? And let me ask you this too. When you come out of war, does COVID feel as bad as it did to some of us people that never had to go through war? No. Uh, what's Francis, can, about I, that? can I share a story real quick? Because I don't know if I don't know if you're gonna share it, but when we met, we we I talked about quarantining for four weeks and you gave an example of quarantining. Can you give that example yeah. of quarantine? Sure. So uh, 
my best friend and I, you know, he's in Carolina. We we talk every day. Childhood friend, actually, he's like a brother. And we were laughing about the situation here and the way people are, you know, um, going about it. Particularly, so during the war, you really think about, a good example would be think about the Iraq war, like you saw it on TV, right? So people are not coming out. Like some of us, they didn't get out of our house for the first time, maybe for like four, five, six months. And you live in a neighborhood like Olathe and within two houses from you, everyone in the neighborhood have left, every soul. So you come out, your house is covered with bushes and all that fun stuff, right? So for us, it's like, okay, so I'm in a nice home right i got groceries uh crap i got television that didn't even exist right i got electricity i got running water um and for some of us who was still working it's like man this is vacation you know um so my perspective on that is so different because my experiences are different um like now COVID, i think has been the best thing so far for me from a personal mental perspective, because they allowed you to just sit there and just let it ride out, you know? So, so that my experience there is totally different. As it relates to work though, um, the goal for me was really to keep the employees employed um, because we have majority of our employees out in the warehouse and obviously they like paycheck to paycheck. So my mind was really, how can we keep our employees fully employed? Um, and what we had to do was really try to maximize our efficiency with the least amount of people being uh, away from work. And we're able to succeed at that. And I think what's even more better is that we did it, you know, being profitable during this time. And it's one of those things where you can not truly explain it because it's like how when everybody else is losing income, how are we more profitable than we were last year? Um, you know, optimizing our staff when we're operating 105, now we're at 86, you know, we're doing more. So I think we just, it just allow us to buckle down, make some tough decisions and changes, but I never followed anybody at the job. Everybody's worked. We have few people out on COVID that came back and we're just doing great, you know, so I'm really excited about that. You know, I, I'm having a similar experience where we're doing a lot better than we were in the past. And sometimes I just wonder, mm-hmm. I not not to take away that I do think a lot of people are struggling, but I think the what the media wants us to think is that everybody's struggling. And that's why we ask this question yeah. of what are the wins? Because you don't have to struggle, you know? I mean, some people, their businesses are going to be tougher because of their industries, but that doesn't mean that it can't also be a good experience too. So I appreciate you sharing that. What about you, Mitch? You quit your job and did all sorts of stuff. So <laughs> what wins here? I got a lot of wins and losses <laughs> going on right now. Uh, I, I would say for the most part, the biggest win was just the clarity on where I wanted to go with the direction of, uh, you know, the future for what we've got to want to do with more than a meal. I know you guys know that I've got a couple other irons in the fire as well. And Friday morning hoops has kind of taken on a leg of its own of just a really unique networking opportunity. Uh, I've kind of honed in on, you know, what is that key thing that uh, creates that unique experience that people want to keep coming back for that. And I've realized, you know, whether you love it or hate it, um, there there's, tends to be a hierarchy when somebody walks in, they've got a suit and tie on or the guy that's wearing bibs. And it's not to say that one person is more important than the other. It's just there's that presence. And what I really, really love about Friday Morning Hoops and what it's created and what's this realization has been is that it strips everybody of that attire and it puts them in gym shorts and a T-shirt. And then when they get out on that basketball court, they're the same people. They're connecting over the same sport that they grew up, loved playing. And it's accelerated the relationships of these people. And we took a survey over it uh, over the last two years. And inside of Friday Morning Hoops, I only reached out to about 50 of them, but 19 of them got back to me. We've done over a million dollars in business together inside that organization, just together. That doesn't talk about anything that's outside of that. So uh, one of those big wins was just starting to realize the the power of the networks you can have. Like, I mean, Scott is one of the best at putting together unique networking opportunities, but the impact that that can have not only on a financial side of things, but also just the deep relationships that have been accelerated through that yeah. uh, puts a lot of joy in my heart and being able to connect people in that way. Yeah, it's exciting. Uh, one thing for one thing for for Lori is is that you're also involved in real estate as well as an investor. And then Francis, at one point in time, was the top basketball prospects coming out of Liberia. And so I think that's, 
really interesting for for you all to connect. And I can safely say that you're if you knew that you did one million, guarantee you did four million. Because m- when networking, most of the value you drive actually is from an introduction to another introduction. A yeah. great example is Francis and I met each other through a gentleman named Mark Basola. Yeah. And Mark's <laughs> never going to see anything that Francis and I do, or you wouldn't direct that, uh, you wouldn't have that direct correlation. And I think one thing that people lose focus on is you can do much more business indirectly than you can directly. Yeah. But everyone's paid to do business directly. <laughs> so it's hard to work in abundance, but eventually, if you have that luxury, of working in abundance. Um, you do a lot of great things. So Mitch, hats off to you. I just want to make sure that you knew that that 1 million is, is not 1 million. It's probably, it could easily, easily is 4 million or more. Yeah. That's the only thing that I could measure. <laughs> yeah. um, you guys play horse. <laughs> well, a fun fact. So just before COVID hit, we hosted a fundraiser for a group called Freedom Hoops here in Kansas City. And I like to say that we were literally the last organized basketball event in Kansas City. Um, you know, NCAA tournament shut down, NBA shut down. Yes, that's right. Uh, we were the last standing. Yeah, I was man. a nervous wreck that day, but we were able to put together a, a tournament, and that was a three on three tournament, knockout tournament, and a um, three point competition. So we didn't do horse, but we can maybe add that. Hopefully, we're going to be able to do year two here. Like five, upcoming. five, and under a horse. <laughs> okay. You don't have to. I'm not going to be blocking your shot and horse, so it doesn't matter how tall you are. Hey, you forgot about something else that was really big that happened to you during COVID, sir. I also added a family member to our gang. Uh, we added our second boy, Vincent Mark. So we've got Dean at three years old and little Vinny at four months old. So the there's actually a lot of caffeine in this right now. <laughs> Scott, and I, Scott and I have been bouncing ideas off of kids. I gave him advice on the first one, and I'm, I'm still waiting for the advice on the second one. I forget when they actually start sleeping through the night again. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we went to Grinders and Mitch's son was a month old and he was like, sometimes they just cry so much, you just don't even know what you're doing. And I'm like, no way. Like that's, and then you have a baby and you're like, I get it. So that was, you were the first person that (laughs) talked to me that was, you were like, oh. I don't know how you survive. Wait 13, and I'm like, why is he up at 3 a.m.? That's where I'm at now. Like, <laughs> go to bed. Aren't you tired? Uh, okay, so let us know if you have questions. We're going to start taking people's questions. So if you have any questions, put them in the comment. Otherwise, you got to think of the questions. We I, we always prep people that then we just start coming up with questions. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Low Ray, let's talk about your hip-hop show. Wow. I don't know if it's necessarily a hip hop show, but one of the fun things you do is you do like you you are so comfortable in this today because you do a show every Friday. So kind of talk about that and and how you kind of pivoted that into bringing on different business leaders in the city. Yeah, so um, the show is called the Lunch Squad. The Lunch Squad we broadcast live every Friday, like you said, at eleven thirty a.m. on um, one hundred point one FM here locally. And uh, onecancityradio.org or the One Kansas City Radio app. So you can listen anywhere in the world. Um, and then we podcast it as well. So we have podcasts. Just search The Lunch Squad. you find the podcast. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it came to me. Um, the, the, the president of the organization, his name is Bernard. Ran into him a, a couple of years ago. We used to work together. Um, I ran back into him and, you know, we did a whole catch up thing. Hey, what you been up to? What you doing? Blah, blah. He told me he, he had this radio show and our radio station and he said he was looking for people and i pitched this idea to at that time i was doing i need to get back to it i was doing these videos called fridays for fathers right Mm. um just in my personal experience being a father i I noticed a couple of things and and, and especially in the black community there's this this narrative that you know black fathers are apps are are absent in their kids lives and that's there are some obviously but that's Overall, I mean, there's so many of us that are active and involved. So I try to change that narrative and uh, did this show called Fridays for Fathers, showing, showcasing dads that are active and involved in their kids' lives, so forth and so on. Well, when I met with Bernard, I mentioned that to him, and he loved that idea. He said, hey, I got to get somebody like you hosting one of my shows. And so uh, long story short, put it together. I, I felt like there was strength in numbers. So I reached out to another a fellow entrepreneur. His name is uh, Lou Blunt. 
Uh, I just met with him and I said, hey, I got this radio show idea. I want you to jump on it with me. And he, and he was with it. So we did it. So it's basically two entrepreneurs um, who, you know, uh, we just get together every every week and we started having guests on there. Aaron, like she said, was one of them. Uh, Luke Wade was on there. You guys mentioned him earlier. Luke Wade was on there. Uh, other just movers and shakers in the city. Uh, Kareem Rush, Jerron Rush, the Rush Brothers. Um, I mean, local artists. Um, all that kind of stuff, you know, uh, we had those guests on the city and, you know, we just like to have like a round table discussion about, and, you know, we try to inspire people. Um, you know, we've had, um, a lot of good topics and stuff like that on there. Um, lately we've been doing tips of the industry. So Lou, he does, he's a branding expert. So he shares tips in that. I share tips in, in real estate and we just cover like local topics and like, hot topics, stuff like that. So it's just two entrepreneurs that try to inspire people and, you know, just try to, uh, you know, represent for the multicultural community. I have to say, too, that was the first time Lorey and I met. But then he was such a champion of showing up at anything. Right. So like when we did our open house, he showed up when I put out a call to have people in one of my you know, remember when I used to do my music videos, guys, and put them on LinkedIn. Everyone thought it was crazy. He was in the Lizzo one. So like he was such a champion. Whenever someone would come on a show, he would become a super champion. So maybe you guys will get on the, on a show one day. I don't know. Yeah, a ton of business comes from just showing up. I uh, I joked around that two of the largest deals that I ended up landing one was in the um, in the uh, hot plate aisle, and then one was in the banana aisle at a local <laughs> grocery store. It wasn't fancy Walmart, Aaron. It was a different. I love, that Walmart. I love that. It's Walmart. really nice. It's a really nice Walmart. But uh, I, that Walmart's going to be a sponsor one day too, because we talk about that. You guys know the fancy Walmart at 150, like 157th and Metcalf. It's nice. It's 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 pretty cool. Big Walmart guy, um, and uh, <laughs> you literally have everything. And uh, Lori, one one question I have before I ask Austin a question for for your business on the real estate side, you're doing a ton of great work in the community. But have people been recognizing you more on the real estate side for business because of the show? Uh, somewhat, somewhat. Yeah. I mean, you know, it all goes hand in hand, right? I mean, as you guys know, just being active on uh, social media, um, you know, any kind of exposure you can get is, is beneficial. So, I mean, there's definitely fans of the show that I probably wouldn't have otherwise that I've been introduced to, um, that I wouldn't have otherwise just on my, my normal pages. So yeah, it's, it's definitely helped with the, the exposure and the visibility for sure. So Austin, I, uh, I I think I randomly came up with this metaphor of of an entrepreneur develops a really, and I'm not an entrepreneur, but they develop a really tough core over time because you're always kind of getting hit in the gut and things are kind of always changing as you're running a business. And one thing that Aaron and I talk a lot about is, you know, how long do you have to be in business to eventually hit your stride? And, you know, whether you're Low Ray or Mitch, Mitch, Francis and I both work for entrepreneurs or Aaron, you know, everyone has their different time frame. So for you, was there a period where you ever hit your stride or is it one of those things where change is just the only constant? Uh, yeah, I don't I mean, I've had this my third company and I think two years is like the magic number, you know, and I think two years into something. I mean, I, I always said I'd give it anything, you know, a year, fully committed, all in, and it's going to pan out or it's not. And some have, some haven't. Um, this one has, other ones haven't, one other has. But it's, you know, I think that's enough commitment to where you know, like, either you're going to get burnt out and it's not cool, or you're going to love it. You may not be where, you, you're never at where you want to be at. You know, it, it's like... <laughs> We, we talk about, you know, whether it's dev or marketing or whatever, it's always going to cost several times more and it takes, you know, three times as long as you expect. Um, but I think a lot of it is the, like what you said, the fortitude. I mean, a lot of people want to be in business, but they want to be an entrepreneur and they just, they don't understand the amount of work that goes into it. And they, you know, and I don't know if it's society. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, like, like you're saying, I mean, there's, handful of people out there that coach, you know, kids on like the everything gets a trophy type thing. But I think a lot of people out there have the fortitude to go through and push through stuff. And I think it's just, you know, a lot of people stop too soon. You know, they don't, they think they need to know everything. I mean, 
I, I was a financial advisor, but, you know, I was trying to sell my family on, you know, life insurance and, and 401ks and stuff like that. But getting into lending or hedge funds or anything like that, I mean, I didn't, I didn't go to college. I don't have any of the background. So, I mean, it's a lot of like, you just got to figure things out. And eventually over time you stick with it and you know a lot about it and you're successful at it. So, you know, I think that's, but I think that's it. I mean, if you want to go commit on something, you know, it's a good, something you have a passion for and you can, and you can work on it and make some money, um, you know, commit to it for a year or two and, and see where it's at. And then I think you'll know at that point if it's something you want to continue or you, you find something else along the way that's even better. So, yeah, that's what I got. Okay. Now, Aaron, do you want to ask Francis a question or do you want me to ask Francis a question? I'm still processing two years. You felt like you hit your stride. I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> I knew that through that. I knew that was going to throw you for a curveball. You're like, wait, wait a minute, I'm behind. Two years? Yeah, I got some work to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have. I I had heard five years from some other people, so I was, I was counting on that. So I was I mean, in five years. I don't. Know. I mean, you you never you never are ready for what's coming at for you, but you you figure it out. You know, I think so. Yeah. You asked Francis, I got a good one for Mitch. So Francis, I'm always really curious, um, and we've talked a little bit about this, but your goals personally and professionally that you want to accomplish. And so what are some of the things that you get the most excited about for the future outside of family? What are some of the things that you'd like to pursue or grow your organization or just do in Kansas City? What, what gets you excited for the future? <clears throat> I really think just learning, learning the community, you know, getting involved in the community in every way I can. Um, just getting to know the people here um, first, and then you figure out what the need is, and then, you know, you, you get into that. But that starts with, you know, again, networking, right? So starting with Mark and then you and then this forum. So it just provides the opportunity to see what is needed in the community. Uh, because you, like you mentioned, I'm an extrovert. I like to get out. I like to talk. I like to share my experiences. So. But I don't know much about Kansas City. I lived here for seven years in college, and I didn't do much but work and go to school. So this is an opportunity that I'm back. You know, I really just want to understand what Kansas City is about. You know, um, but my personal passion is really with the young folks, kids. You know, I want to get involved in that. Um, I see Mitch does basketball. You know, eventually getting something like that because that's stuff I'm passionate about. We talk about music. You know, get involved with that as it relates to kids. You know, just a way to get back to the community because I didn't have that growing up. So I just think um, because I figure if I had that, I think I would have been a better person all around. Um, so that's that's pretty much what my goal would be at the present moment. Yeah. Well, if you know Scott, you'll know where to go to meet. Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good start for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're already like 20 steps ahead of where I was. <laughs> uh, OK, so Mitch, I have an entrepreneur question for you. Yeah. One of my biggest scared reasons of not starting my company was because I was a single mom, right? And it's really scary to say, uh, especially when you're doing decent, and I was just doing the bare minimum decent when it came to money, um, to go to say, well, I'm okay taking none and making my own. How tough of a decision and what was the final, mm -hmm. like, I'm going to make this jump? I, Steve Harvey calls it your jump moment, right? What was that that led you to go? I mean, when you have a brand new baby, that's a scary decision. When you've got two babies and a wife to take care of, that's a scary decision. What was your jump moment to say, okay, I'm going all in? Oh, man. Yeah, that was, um, you know, I'm very fortunate in my wife being as extremely supportive as she can. And like I had said before, <clears throat> uh, from a financial perspective, we were taken care of and we were living a really nice life. And it was just, I was doing work that was unfulfilling to me. And it wasn't the team that I was working with. That was one of the hardest things for me to do by leaving my previous employer was the team members that I was going to leave behind because they did have a huge part. I mean, I grew up in that industry. I was there for eight and a half years out of college and uh, making that big leap uh, was extremely scary. The point where I made that final decision was uh, talking with my wife and we've kind of worked out our finances and everything and know how long we can make it before uh, we're hurting. And it really just came down to the simple question of if you look back in 20 years and you didn't do this, are you going to regret it? And, you know, uh, it was a, at that, that was it. The answer was yes. I knew that I wanted to at least go out 
and prove to myself. And you know, the, one of the most encouraging things about this, when I posted this to LinkedIn, I've had so much traction. I've had personal messages of people saying, thank you so much for showing the courageous act that you did of leaping your, you know, there's several of us or a bunch of people have reached out and said this. And, you know, unfortunately I haven't had the chance to like reply to them because it's been a little overwhelming, but the fact that I'm able to be uh, a light in somebody else's eyes right now of some courage, I honestly, it's already been worth it already. I'm in two days in, but the, the ultimate decision time, and I actually lift, listened to that Steve Harvey video, uh, you got to jump multiple, multiple times for the last two weeks before I put in my notice. But it really just came down to knowing that I have a wife that is extremely supportive of myself. And, you know, she's a little entrepreneur herself. She's got some uh, side gigs going and she's doing a great job doing that too. So uh, fun fact, she is now the breadwinner of our home. So uh, she <laughs> likes to tout that as well right now, which, hey, more power to you. Maybe she can come on your all women's show sometime soon. I don't know. Yeah, 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 for sure. We're going to get her on here next. I'll tell you what, somebody <laughs> sent me that video. If you haven't watched the Steve Harvey, you got a jump video, Google it. Somebody sent that to me the day that I quit my job. And I, I still watch it all of the time. I would watch that. And then I would watch Pursuit of Happiness all yes. the time. Those two yes. things. Anytime I'm having a tough day, those are those are two of my go-tos. Speaking of what we were talking about motivational. I mean, here's the thing. You know, I do that show with Les every day. And one of the things he says is people always say garbage in, garbage out. That's not how it works. It's whatever you put in stays in you, right? And so putting that stuff in is going to get through I mean, Austin could speak to this and Lo Ray uh, and uh, your personal experiences, Francis, like when it's tough, there's something else has to resonate with you to get through those tough and it can be tough to be an entrepreneur. So, oh, but you yeah. got a good, you got a good support system. That's all these comments are today. They're all excited. You quit your job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize so many people were waiting for me to quit my job. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, during COVID maybe, I mean, you are inspiring because there's a lot of people you know, for me, when it started getting dark two weeks ago, I really started personally just getting scared for the economy because of all the mental health things that we have going on and not being able to be outside, not being able to play with your children or go on walks or have your kids do sports. You know, there's so much unease. And I think the reason why your story is resonating to Aaron's point, because you have a gigantic network and everyone loves you and you've always been a go-giver first and so therefore you have so many people rooting for you maybe something that we haven't seen yet but as your message gains more traction i think it could be because of covid and people being so scared about what's next and they want to do what you're doing but they're struggling to figure out how to do it mm -hmm. and i could see your post kind of catching fire not not trying to throw the viral term but maybe it could and i think that's probably why it's just because you know, winter's coming and it's it's a scary time for business and, yeah. and mental health in general. So Aaron didn't want to steal your thunder on the on your train of thought for questioning. Oh, but yeah. no, I agree. And I'm gonna go comment on your stuff. That'll help you out too. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I haven't done it my feed yet. But Thank we will you. you know, Mitch actually did our pitch contest that we did a few weeks ago and he did amazing. So he was Thank on vacay. So he stopped his vacation to do it. So we've only got a few more minutes here. So I just wanted to go around and ask everyone. Let's say, you know, I saw a study yesterday that said this, all of this, whatever we're going through now, it's not post pandemic, but it like doesn't quite feel like quite the pandemic. It's kind of like mid pandemic, I guess, mm -hmm. could be going till the end of 2021. So low Ray and everybody will just go around in the same order. What, so say 2022 and beyond, what does success look like through all of this on the other side of this for you? Wow. Oh, success. Well, I, I think well, success is you know I I, th I don't think success has changed. I, I think success is you know every person having something that they're um, aspiring to be. You know it, it it doesn't have to be money. It doesn't have to be you know I mean, people find different things like like Mitch. You know what I mean? He he made a jump into something that he's passionate about. Um, you know, and it's not tied to a job. It's tied to a mission. You know, um, you know, for me, it's spending time with my daughter and just for me is 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 setting up her future. That's what my mission is, is setting up her future. And as long as I'm doing stuff to to build businesses for her to be a part of and to to um, give her a, a generational um, like I'm trying to change generational wealth 
among certain communities, you know. Um, so changing her mindset and um, you know, giving her entrepreneurial spirit, you know, that hey, you can you can literally in this day and age with technology, you can do whatever you want to. Literally, you can literally be whatever you want to be. And so just freeing her mind and all that kind of stuff and you know, set stuff up for her, you know, my nieces, my nephews, just these generations behind me, just setting stuff up for them that I, I wasn't exposed to, right? Just trying to change that aspect. That's that's my mission. So as long as I'm expiring toward that, I feel like I'm being successful, you know? Um, so I think that's with anybody. It's just people just making that jump or people just focusing on something, some kind of mission, and just keep striving for that. And I, I think that's success. I love that. And not to take away from anybody else's parenting skills, but I follow Lo Ray on social and we've become friends over the past couple of years. He's a single dad and his entire, every decision, it, it, it inspires me to be a better mom because sometimes I've had mine for a really long time though, but sometimes my decisions aren't always based. Every decision I see him make is based around her and it is inspiring. So if you ever need parenting inspiration, go watch Lo Ray. Awesome. Yeah. What, does success, what does success look like for you on the other side of this? Yeah, no, that's a that's a good perspective you got there, Lorraine. It's uh, you know, we're, we're we got married a year ago. We're working on our our first kid, so it, I, showing the two dogs around what I do for work, you know, only goes so far. But um, no, I, I uh, yeah, it's, man, twenty two. Um, yeah, it's hard to think that far ahead. I, I kind of during this pandemic, I actually kind of backtracked and I was like, hey, you know, you need you can only control what you can control, like there's, you have what you have to do today, like all the stuff that's going to happen next week or next month, or is there going to be another stimulus? Is there not? Is there going to be, you know, football? Thank God there is, um, you know, what is it, what's going to be around the corner and, and trying to predict it and control it. It's like, I was just trying to do like all the right things and it's going to work out how it's going to work out. You know, I have goals. I had, it's not like I'm just wandering around and Neverland, but um, you know, I have goals that I want to achieve and, you know, family and personal and business. And, you know, again, it's, it's, uh, just trying to take today and, uh, can, and can do what I can today. And, uh, everything, you know, works out, I think in that, in that mindset, I know that's not the 22 goal, but it's, uh, you know, that's where my mind's at right now. And, you impressed me when you said you were a newlywed going through a pandemic. You guys yeah. are still making it. So that's good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, well, a year ago. Yeah. So our one year anniversary was, uh, it went from going to the, um, to the South of France, to the Grand Prix and, and Cannes Film Festival to sitting at home. I think we ordered hundred peppers or something. <laughs> so <laughs> very different than what we thought one year was going to be, but, uh, hopefully it's, it's next year, you know, we'll see. But nice. Thank, thank you guys for the, the show. It's, it's awesome. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And um, we'll bring you back on to talk about your dogs again. If, as long as you say I'm a dog father, like you practice it, okay? Practice that, yes, yes. <laughs> right. Francis, 2022. 2022 for me is just, you know, getting there with uh, sanity with the family, the wife and the kid, you know, with the school situation, um, how everything's just so fluid. Just us getting there with a peace of mind. Um, I think will be a huge success for me on the personal side because then we can build from there. Um, on the professional side, you know, again, I really feel obligated to be a part of keeping our employees employed here. So just trying to make sure we stay afloat enough where everybody can self, you know, we can sustain and went, until this thing passes by. And then, you know, in our process, hopefully keep smiling, everybody around you, get them smiling, get us laughing, you know, Laughter will get us through this. And I think uh, that's that's my 2022 goal. I like it. Yeah, this virtual school, it's it's a learning lesson, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mitch, how about you? My goal for 2022 is to still be doing what I'm doing today. Um, it's fresh, but we'll see what happens. Um, to what Lorraine kind of mentioned before, uh, success is defined differently to each individual person. And I think that's something that took me a long time to realize that success was not based on the number of zeros that came in and the uh, paycheck. So uh, personal success for me right now, uh, making sure I'm there for my boys and my wife through this. We're going to hit the open road a little bit and travel as much as we possibly can during these scenarios. And I'm really looking forward to having the freedom to be able to do that while still doing our work. Uh, from the professional standpoint, 
uh, working on growing Friday morning hoops to a couple different cities. Uh, I'd like to have it in two more cities uh, by 2022. And then for more than a meal, uh, I'm really, really excited about our give back fund that we're being able to create off of each purchase from the business side. So if we can get our three to five nonprofits rolling with consistent meals by 2022, I'm going to have a pretty big smile on my face being able to do that. That's awesome. I love that. Good luck with an RV. You see their year wait no, no. these days. We're a, we're a minivan family. Oh. <laughs> Scott, nice. you got a minivan? You got excited about that. I reached the other day. Someone told me about getting a minivan, and I was like, oh, nice. Like, I, I caught myself, myself being like, oh, my God, the, the third row is super spacious. You got the sunken, <laughs> you got the sunken uh, trunk. You can put anything in there. <laughs> so yeah, I, I never thought I'd catch myself going nice. Yeah, um, yeah, I kicked and screamed on the way to that dealership until I got in that co-pilot seat and the driver's seat. I was just like, "This is where I was supposed to be." <laughs> Wait, honey, honey, we, we forgot to shut the door. You forgot to shut the door. Oh, don't worry, I got a button for that. <laughs> You guys are getting so old on me. I, I could never do the minivan, but I did find myself feeling really old when I was like, I have to have captain seats for them to get to the third row, right? Like, mm. it's hard to find a good captain seat. I see why people go the minivan route. Lo Ray, you got the minivan route yet? No. No, I got one kid. Just one kid. So I'm good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a minimum of two kids. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Or now I've just got a lot of teenagers in mind. So uh, yeah, 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 there you go. I'm Devin to be nicer to my car though, because it's his in two years. <laughs> oh man, I'm not ready for that. <laughs> Look at poor Austin. He's like, what am I getting into? <laughs> Oh man! Well, thank you all so much for coming on. We truly appreciate it. I do want to cover a couple quick things. Uh, Scott kind of alluded earlier to if you're looking for a career, Bank of Blue Valley is actually currently hiring. So I know this is a long URL. You can pause the show after it's over and come back to this and put this in there. And, uh, or I will go ahead and put it into the comments as well. So you can just link to it, but go check out careers right here. I know a lot of people were speaking about in-person events. Keep on watching because Scott and I have something coming up here really soon that we're going to tell you guys. Maybe we'll even tell you next week, but if you want to be the very first to know, or if you want your reminder about the show every week, Go ahead and text us, Drinks with Leaders, 913-298-8790. Good job, Mitch, you're hired. That is where you will get all of your insider information on who's going to be guests, what's coming up, and what the in-person event is. I promise you it will be socially distanced, outdoors, and amazing. So... All right. Well, thank you all so much for coming on. We will link everybody so you can connect with our guests. So we'll link them right here on the show. Uh, give Mitch a couple weeks to get through all his messages, it sounds like. But he is going to get to all of them because I preach that a lot. And I learned from the best. <laughs> yeah. I, me or Scott? <laughs> you when it comes to LinkedIn. Well, right. Well, Scott when it comes in person. <laughs> we appreciate you watching, and we will see you next week. Same time.